Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how I made my first set of cards using the December 2020 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, see how I made them, and get a few tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday, I stopped by with the newest sheet load of cards and shared a look at the first set with you. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how I made that and I have a few tips along the way. Now, if you want to download the file for yourself when you're done here, make sure to check out yesterday's video. It gives you all the details on how you can download it. It will be linked in the description box below. Don't forget today that all of my collaborators are joining me online to share a look at their first set using the December 2020 sheet load of cards. Make sure once you're done here, you go visit them all and leave them some love. All of their YouTube channels, Instagram accounts and blogs are linked in the description box below. Before we get into the process, I wanted to show you the main supplies that I'll be using today. When I add stuff later on, I will be sure to let you know, but if you have any questions when I'm done, make sure to leave those in the comments section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. For my sentiment today, I will be using Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from the Gina K Designs Holiday Tapestry Stamp Set. This stamp set was part of the Sparkle and Shine card kit, which was the prize for my No Spend November Challenge and Giveaway series. I will be back later today to announce the winner, so make sure that if you played along with me and earned entries, that you check back to see if you're the lucky winner. I will be stamping that in the Gina K Designs Faded Brick Ink. And for my pattern papers, I pre-chose some from the Cranberry Christmas Hot Buy Pad from Michaels. I ended up getting out four pattern papers. These first three are going to be the ones that I cut like the instructions say. And then this red one I will be using in place of CS2. As crafters, we probably know that reds and burgundies and maroons are hard to match with cardstocks. So since this pattern paper came in this same pad, I decided to use it instead of a cardstock. Let's get crafty! To get started today, I'm going to be cutting my pattern papers. I'll show you how I cut one of them and then the other two I'll do off camera. I start by cutting two strips that are five and a quarter inches wide. That first strip I cut, I then rotate and cut it into three pieces that are four inches tall. For the second strip, I start by cutting three pieces that are one and a half inches tall, and you'll see there that I'm using the one and a half inch mark to the left of the cut line on my trimmer. Once I have those three pieces cut out, the paper gets rotated once again, and I trim this to four and a quarter inches wide. This piece then gets cut down into three pieces that are two and a half inches, and it will take up the rest of that piece. I cut down the next two sheets in the same exact way. Each one will end up yielding me nine pieces. Now I'm gonna use that fourth piece of pattern paper and cut it down per the instructions for CS2. What I'm gonna do is cut a strip from the pattern paper that is three and a half inches wide. Then I will rotate this and cut it until I get nine pieces that are one inch tall. Once again, I will be using the one inch mark to the left of where my blade runs. It's much easier to just push this from right to left for each of the pieces instead of readjusting it each time to fit it with the one inch mark to the right of the cut line. For my sentiments, I brought in a piece of cardstock that is an off-white. 
This is the same shade that I'll be using later for my card bases. This is going to get cut down into nine pieces that are two and a quarter inch squares. I start by trimming it into three strips that are two and a quarter inches wide and then those get rotated and cut down until I end up with nine final pieces. Now the reason I chose the off-white is because there isn't really any white in my pattern papers. It more matches the shade of this cardstock. Before you put your cutter away, this would be the time for you to cut down your card bases. I already have them done, so this is one step that I'll skip. If you follow the sketch, CS2 calls for a scallop border on the top. I will be using this Stampin' Up! Scallop Border Punch. I don't think it's available anymore. If you don't have any border punches, and it doesn't even have to be scalloped, you could bust out those old decorative scissors that most of us have hanging out. Or if you have any border dies, you could use that as well. Normally when you use a border punch you would center your piece left to right on the punch but because I want to make sure that the right side of my piece of paper is a full scalloped not a half like it shows on the punch I will be lining up my piece of paper with the pattern on the bottom of the punch. I make sure that when I'm done punching this that on the right side I end up with a full scallop. Let me know below if you still use border punches. I used to buy all of them when they came out and still love them to this day. Let me know what your favorite is. The next thing I'm going to do is round the corners again like it calls for in the sketch. Now just like with the decorative border on CS2, you can totally skip these and just leave them with 90 degree corners. For my corner rounding today, I got out my We Are Memory Keepers Corner Chomper and I will be using the one quarter inch side. Piece C is going to get the top right corner rounded. That will be the only corner on this piece. And then on my sentiment blocks, both of the top corners get the rounding treatment. Just like my border punches, this is another tool that I just love. Now some of you might have already seen it, but I put a little poll on my community tab to see if you were interested in a series in December where I share with you my crafty must-haves. If you are, let me know in the comment section below. For the stamping, I brought in my Misty so that I can set the stamp up once and stamp it all nine times. Because my magnet will not fit on my piece of cardstock along with the sentiment, I am just going to align each piece in the bottom right corner of my Misty. The sentiment that I chose for today's stamps reads Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. I am going to center this from left to right on the sentiment block and I do leave it a little bit more toward the top because later you'll see that the scallop piece will cover up a little bit of the bottom. Once I picked that up with the lid of my Misty, I did make sure using the grid lines on the lid that the sentiment was straight across. And somehow I did that on the first try. I inked this up with the faded brick ink and stamped it. Now this first attempt, it was a little bit splotchy. It is a newer stamp, so this happens. So I inked it up again and the second time it looked great. Now everything's set up so I can quickly ink up and stamp each of those nine pieces. Now it's time to match up those papers for my card fronts. I'm going to start by taking the text paper and then I go to the next row and get the poinsettias. Then from the third row I grab the remaining pattern paper which is the green. Now for my next card, I'm going to use the same text, but I'm going to skip the flower paper and grab the green. Then I will get the poinsettias for that final piece on that card. This way the cards look a little bit different. For the third one, you can do whichever way you want from the first two cards. I just do the same thing until I have nine little card kits ready to turn into card fronts. Now that all of the pieces are ready, it's time to start assembling the cards. 
I start by putting adhesive on the back of piece C and then this gets put in the lower left hand corner of piece A. Next, I put a little bit of adhesive on the front of the CS2 piece and this gets placed behind the remaining pattern paper piece or piece B. Once that is in place, I added adhesive to the back of that, making sure not to get any adhesive where the scallops were because I will actually be putting adhesive onto my sediment piece and this gets slipped in behind those scallops. The rest of the cards get put together in pretty much the same way, but I wanted to show you one more just to show you how you can adjust how much of CS2 is peeking out from behind pattern paper B. If you'll notice here on the close up, you see more of the scallop with that second one. You can adjust this for whatever your sentiment needs or your image if that's what you stamp there. Once those were all adhered together, I placed the card front centered on each of the card bases. To add a little sparkle to each of my cards, I brought in my gold glitter dots from Elizabeth Craft Designs. The bottom left of this card is pretty thick and bulky. It does have five layers of paper there. So I will be placing these glitter dots in the upper right hand corner. I tried out lots of different ways to put three glitter dots on each of these. On the first card, I used three of the largest and just put those in a straight line up and down. For the second one, I again used three of the largest glitter dots, but I made it in more of a right angle shape. On the next card, I used that right angle shape again. I placed one of those largest ones in the corner, and then for the other two, I chose a slightly smaller size. I just love the variety of sizes that comes on each of these sheets. Eventually, I realized, you know what? I am going to put one of those teeny tiniest glitter dots over the eye in Christmas. Just a little more sparkle and it brings the sides of the cards together. I continued adding the glitter dots until each of the cards had a little sparkle. Here's a look at the finished set. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together my first set using the December 2020 sheet load of cards. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go visit all of the collaborators linked in the description box below. And if you want to download the files so you can make a sheet load of cards for yourself, make sure to check out yesterday's video. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.